Hello everybody on YouTube. Today I am going to show you how to connect over the internet with your Sega Saturn. This is everything you're going to need right in front of you. A phone cable, internet cable, a VoIP adapter, Sega Saturn, and the Sega Saturn Netlink cartridge. You're going to have to get this exact model of this VoIP adapter and make sure that the one you buy is unlocked. If you buy one that's locked, it's not going to work at all. So if you see a listing for this and it just doesn't even mention anything about being unlocked, then just assume that it's locked and don't buy that one. So if you search these on eBay, you'll see there's a couple here for 15 bucks. And there's also more listings for, these are giant lots, like 40 sets, 26 sets, 10 sets. You really only need one, guys. So I actually got my Sega Saturn Netlink for about $30. I saw a listing on Amazon for a used one and it was like $22 with $7 shipping, so I jumped right on it. Uh, you can, I've seen listings on eBay for this thing end at like 20 bucks with like $5 shipping, but I've also seen listings end for around $50. So this thing could cost you anywhere between $20 and $50 depending on how lucky you are. Still pretty cheap, honestly. Definitely more cheaper than the Dreamcast broadband adapter, so it's not the most expensive thing in the world. Okay, so first thing you want to do is plug in power to your VoIP adapter. Then take your internet cord and plug that in as well. Take your phone cable, plug that into the VoIP adapter. And the other end goes into the line connection on the Sega Saturn. Okay, so now to configure your VoIP adapter. What you're going to want to do is log into your router. So to do that, type 192.168.1.1 into your web browser, press enter. And if you don't know what your password is, find your router and look in the back of it. There should be a password key somewhere there. So type in your password when you know what it is. And so I'm doing Fios by Verizon. Um, you know, you probably might be using something else, but it all works the same. Uh, what I do is I go to my network, primary network, and you're going to want to look for something called Sepura SPA. As long as that internet cord is plugged in and, the, and it's powered on, it should be showing up. If you have, if you bought a locked one, it's not going to show up at all. So that's why it's important. So anyway, the reason why we're going here is because you want to look at the IP address that it was assigned. Here's mine. Uh, so what you do is you, now you take that IP address and you type that to the web browser. And you should be at a screen that looks like this. So now if you want to configure this, you're going to have to click admin login and then advanced. Okay, now that we're in, First thing you want to do is go to system and make sure that your settings look like mine. If you have to pause the video, then do it. Cause I'm kind of just going to run through these. SIP, make sure it looks like this. I got to scroll down. So like I said, you're going to have to pause the video. Okay, now provisioning. You're not going to be really changing every single thing. I mean, some of these are like just the way they were at default, but there are a couple of values here and there that you are going to have to check. So make sure that you're thorough with this. And then phone. And then line one. So there is a setting on this page that um, me and someone else figured out that if you mess around with them, you can get better results that you weren't going to see on the official guide. So 
before I mention that though, let's scroll down here and make sure that everything looks like this. So first thing, actually before I go into the setting that I, I mentioned before, you'll notice that here it says SIP port 4000. Now if you look at the official guide, it'll mention uh, port 5060, and you can do either one, but really, um, it doesn't really matter which one you do, it's just do either or, but just make sure that when you are connecting with somebody, make sure you have the same port set up. And so this one, I have it set it at 4000, so the other person that I connect with, he has his at the 4000. But you know, this can be changed whenever you want, so you know, if, if you're having trouble connecting with 4000, try 5060. Um, these ports are going to have to be forward on your router, but uh, we haven't gotten there yet. So anyway, for the, the, the official guide says to keep the network jitter level at low and the jitter buffer adjustment at disabled. Now I've found that when, when playing most, I mean pretty much all the games, um, me and the guy I connected to, I live in New York, he lives somewhere down south in the USA. And we found that doing this to medium actually worked a lot better. And for when we play Bomberman specifically, setting the jitter buffer adjustment to up and down makes a huge difference. I mean, the games, I mean, I would actually say this is like a requirement when we play Bomberman. But if you're not playing Bomberman and you're playing any of the, any of the other online games on the Saturn, just keep this disabled. You're going to want to mess around with low, medium, and high uh, if you're ever having trouble. So personally, I found the most success with medium, so that's what I left it at. And you're pretty much done. Make sure that... I forgot to mention this a little earlier, but make sure you're clicking Submit All Changes. Okay, so now we have to port forward. Log back into your router, and like I said, I'm doing Files by Verizon, so it might look a little bit different for you, but it should all be relatively in the same spots. For me to port forward, I have to go to Firewall, I click Yes, and then I click Port Forwarding. And, you know, I mean, here, let me just show you. This is what I've done. So you have to basically select Supera SPA and Port Forward 5060, Port Forward 16384 to 16482, and Port Forward 4000. And I mean, just to walk you guys through in case you, I mean, like I said, it might look different for you guys, but for me, I just had to like select the Supera, Supera SPA here, application to forward, uh, I go to custom ports, and here I can just type in whatever I want, UDP, any number I want, I could do any range, I could do this to 65540, uh, you know, whatever. So that's how I do it, and then I click Add. That's how it, that's how it works. That's how simple port forwarding is. So keep an eye on these three right here, because it's got to look like that. You got to port forward those exact ports. And keep in mind, in that previous step in line one, when uh, the reason why I mean, technically, if you're only uh, porting 5060, you could technically, like here, here. Like I just I just port forward both of them and just leave them both uh, open. But if you really want, you could just you know since I'm using 4000, I guess I could technically you know delete the 5060 one. I don't need that one. But uh, I just leave it there just in case since you know just in case I'm, I'm I play with someone else and it works better that port or whatever. But yeah, this one definitely always has to be open. Okay, so after configuring everything, you should uh, boot up your game with the Netlink cartridge plugged in, and it should bring you to the XBand menu. Go to Setup. Click on Character, and here you can just change like whatever avatar you want. Code name. This lets you change whatever name you want, your username basically. Taunt is like a little message that appears when you're matching with somebody. And phone setup, dialing mode to tone, and dialing prefix none. 
So now if you want to dial somebody, there's a certain way that you have to do it. This is just an example, but basically the zeros you're going to want to replace with the person you're trying to connect with's IP address. So if they don't know what their IP address is, they can just ask them to go on Google or go to my IP, find my IP or myipaddress.com, whatever those are. Any, anything like that, and they can find out what their public IP address is just from going on one of those websites. And then you have to share it. So you guys got to share each other's IP address. So the, the, meth, the way that it works is you got to put 11 and then an asterisk and then the IP address and the asterisk again with 4,000 with the number sign. So the asterisks are basically replacing the periods, so don't use any periods. And like I said, this is, mine is set to 4,000. Um, I port forwarded both and I suggested that you did the same, but if you guys have it set to 4,000 on line one in the Linksys configuration, then you do 4,000. Otherwise, you can change this to 5060. You know, like I said, it all depends on what number you guys put there. And you got to do the pound. So yeah, you guys both have to have the same number there. And that's basically it, guys. You know, or you could you could go to wait and have your friend dial you and you don't want to dial them. And you know, sometimes it'll give you this message if you want to practice with somebody. I mean, I don't know, do whatever you want. I've, I've never pressed yes here, I just kind of wait. So there are some additional steps you can do to reduce lag, but it really depends on what kind of router you have. Uh, if you want to take a look at what those extra steps are, I recommend just clicking the link in my description to the uh, Dreamcast Talk forum. And towards the bottom on their step number four, you can see these additional steps. Again, like I said, my router doesn't even have these options, but I, you know, I, without doing these additional steps, I don't have any lag. I don't have any problems without it. So you don't need to do those. But uh, yeah, just check out the link down below. Um, maybe you're better off, you know, following guides by reading them than watching a video. Totally understand. I did not figure this stuff out at all. All the credit goes to the people on that forum. I think it was Zaiden and Sega RPG fan. They're the ones that kind of got this whole thing figured out. So yeah, check out that link. There is a community out there for Sega Saturn Netlink games. Uh, join the Dreamcast Talk Discord. And there is a spot called Sa Saturn Netlink on the side. And you click on that and here's where people kind of go to, um, you know, make matches. There is also the, Sega, the, or the Saturn League, the Sega Saturn League. You can look that up on Google. But that's pretty much abandoned. I mean, nobody really posts there anymore. So I think your best bet of finding matches is on the dreamcasttalk.com Discord. I'm going to put my Discord name on the description. So add me. And even if it's years in the future, add me. Talk to me. Maybe uh, we can get a game going. Because I'm always down.